As you can see from the title of the video, no, it's not clickbait. You can run this MIDI PC, as I will show you in this video, at 5 gigahertz and even up to 5.2 if you overvolt it a little bit. So this is a very small, bare bones mini PC that I picked up from AliExpress. I have a full review of the Core i7 model, so if you want details on the ports, the build quality, and everything else, please do refer to that video. This video is just gonna be covering the change, which of course is that Core i9, eighth generation, it's the 8950HK that you'll find in gaming, high-end gaming laptops. But here it is in this tiny little mini PC that costs 533 US, so it's 120 US more than the Core i7 model. And you don't have a course, being bare bones, no RAM, hard drives or anything like that. You need to supply those parts yourself. So, is it worth that extra money? A little bit of a spoiler alert, it does run into some current limiting that I knew it probably would. And you can get around the power limit throttling. That's easy to do. And I will show you just how to overclock it and how it performs. But it is just super quick considering the size of this thing, which is the size of, in fact, smaller than a desktop power supply unit. Okay, so this is what I have set up in the BIOS. So the BIOS here is very basic. They have us blocked out for lots of things. It's very unusual, but they've put the settings we want in the boot, okay? So this is where we need to go down to view and configure turbo options. There's another few things in here you can tweak. Ah, a lot of people are asking about this. So if you wanted to auto boot, so if you're gonna run this as a server on a switch or something like that, and if it loses power, and once it regains power, it will automatically switch itself on again. So this is great for say a CentOS server or whatever you're gonna be doing, file server or something like that, is you set it to this. So you want it on the S0 state after G3, it will auto power on, which is great. Okay, so in here, uh, energy efficient P state, I've actually turned that off because I've been overclocking. And what we can do here is set our power limit. So I put 200 watts, so you put whatever you want in there. And here is our main thing here, the core ratio limit override. So I have it set to actually 5.1, sorry, 5.1 gigahertz is what I'm thinking. But uh, 50 is really the max there. 5.1 works for me, uh, but I cannot undervolt much at all. I can even run all cores at actually 5.2 gigahertz, but I need to overvolt then. And overvolt seems to be all right, but then the temperatures creep up, but they don't actually still go over about 85 degrees so it's just really good this mini pc so that's where you set your turbos and it's going to take a lot of experimentation with this to get it stable mileage will vary from unit to unit so each chipset will have its own undervolting limits and and clocks and things some people might be able to get 5 gigahertz others might be able to get 5.2 like me or maybe you can't even go over really 4.9 Okay, so I'm gonna run through some benchmarks here just quickly, just a few things. I'm not gonna go into a massive amount of detail because it's all just covered in the other video, the review of the Core i7-8750H version. Now this model's 120 US more. You get a lot more performance out of it, but it's not really value for money. And as I'll get to why that is just in this video. So one of the upgrades I've done here is the Intel Wireless. I've swapped it out, I've put a much faster Wireless AC Gigabit this is the Intel 9260, super fast. And you can get them off AliExpress for about 18 US dollars. So very cheap and highly recommended upgrade here. Now here are some benchmarks that are just absolutely crazy. So I managed to get some really good overclocks on this. You can see that the maximum frequency was right up to 5.2. However, it wasn't quite 100% stable. And I ended up just going with a maximum clock, as you'll see, and what I said in the BIOS of just five gigahertz. So this score, is 20% faster than the other model I reviewed. Single core score, and then our multi-core score works out to be approximately 15% faster for that 130 US more. It is quite an increase there. You can see this is the score now of the other model that I reviewed. So there's the difference. And it's my tower PC at home, which has a Core i7 8700K, overclocked to five gigahertz, water cooling, makes lots of noise, and look at the difference here. Okay, so this is a massive difference on the multi-core score because it won't hold the five gigahertz turbos on this mini PC due to current limit throttling. More on that in just a second here. But you see the difference, look at this. Mini PC that's smaller than a, a power supply unit that's in a desktop. And look at that. This to me is just unbelievable, the performance that is packed into this tiny little mini PC. Fan noise is absolutely amazing on it. It doesn't make hardly any noise. 
If you can hear a fan going, that's actually my laptop that I'm using to screen capture at the moment. So here are the prices of it. So I paid uh, 533 US as you can see. And there of course is that graphics card stand that I bought as well. If you wanted to run an external GPU, losing about 10%, 12% of the performance of it. So let's get into the finer details there of what's happening when we stress it. So we run a stress test. It cannot hold the five gigahertz across all the six cores. I kind of expected that. It will hold about 4.1 gigahertz across all six cores, which is fine. The same goes for Cinebench. I'll show you the result of that in just a second. So this is our problem. Current limit throttling. It's either the voltage regulator on the motherboard. Could be the power supply. Maybe I need a bigger, larger power supply. This one's only 90 watts. Maybe I need 120 watts or 150. I don't really think so because it doesn't have a dedicated GPU. I just think it's the motherboard. And unless we unlock the BIOS completely, we're not going to be able to get around this problem here. But for me, the performance is really good. So rock stable. I'm having no problems with the stability of this machine. It has been absolutely fine with, I'll show you right here, an undervolt, a very slight one here. And all I've done is, okay, I tweaked the power limits, you can see. And there's the multiplier again, all at 50 as I showed you with the BIOS. Now I'll just get out of this and quickly show you. This is Cinebench, so this is a very good score. Okay, I could probably get a little bit higher if I lowered the clocks and undervolted like crazy, but I'm just gonna leave it here because I don't really run Cinebench a lot. This is just for benchmarking purposes. My interest is video editing, and this is why I want the high clocks because it does really help out on the encoding times. So that is an impressive score. I was hoping for actually a little higher than that. My desktop here, because it holds the five gigahertz, of course, across all the six cores, that Coffee Lake gets about, I think it's 1600 CB or 1500 just off the top of my head. But for just a tiny little mini PC, this is absolutely amazing performance again. So the thermals are not a problem. The fan, it's, right now, it's not making any noise whatsoever. If you can hear fan noise, that's actually my laptop that's recording this screen capture. So we are consuming here maximum watts, 76. That's it, the max it will pull. Now add another four or five watts on top of that, so about 80 watts. And then idle, it's not quite idle at the moment, I have it set on high performance. Idle is about 10 watts at the moment, hovering around 12. It's still a lot less than my tower PC, of course, there. So the fan noise really good. Thermal 76 max, that is it about 76 or 78 is the core max. I haven't seen it go over that and just unbelievably quiet how good this is. I'm just so impressed with the cooling. Desktop cooler on a laptop notebook CPU works absolute wonders. So I have a test here set up to export 4K. Now this is Adobe Premiere Pro. This is my main use for this mini PC. I don't care about gaming. I have a gaming PC at home. So how long will it take? Let's, let's time this. So here we go. Start, export. Sorry, yeah, I was a little slow with that. So it is going to take one minute of footage with the 4K YouTube preset and Adobe Premiere Pro, Adobe Premiere Pro. You're looking about a minute. This is just really good. Absolutely blazing fast and just what I want this mini PC to do here. So it's going to be just actually over a minute, you can see. I was a little slow when I started it too, but let's have a look very quickly. What is it doing? Okay, it's still holding a very high clock rate, but we're bouncing off the current limit throttling all the time. Okay, so there we go. Has it finished up? No, eight seconds apparently left. So it's just over a minute. Okay. Once that disappears, I'll hit pause. So there we go. I think approximately one minute and seven seconds for one minute of footage. That's really good. My desktop does it at about one minute for one minute of footage. So this really is not that much slower at all. And yes, it will run Linux absolutely fine. It flies, especially with those turbos set a little bit high, the overclocking there, no problems whatsoever. So you can set this up as mentioned as a server if you wanted to it would be Absolutely fine for that. A very powerful little server too, where you don't need, of course, a dedicated GPU. Okay, so I'm really happy with this mini PC. Yes, it's expensive. I think, yeah, 530 US 
So you're paying about 120 US more than the Core i7 model. Is it worth it though? Is it worth paying that extra to get about the 20% more you get single thread or multi-threaded performance? It's about 15% more if you look at Geekbench. It all depends on what you're doing. So if you're gonna be doing a lot of really demanding work on this, it depends if so if you're running, I don't know, looping Cinebench R15 or R20 non-stop, then the performance isn't quite as you'd expect. It's still a lot faster than the Core i7 model, but what really gets me with this mini PC, okay, the form factor of it's really good, the build quality is great, but the fan noise, the fan noise on this one actually seems to be better than my Core i7 model, which seems crazy because it's got the higher clocks. It might have a better thermal paste job on this one. I haven't actually checked that yet. So you hardly ever hear the fan. It just idles at a very low rate. So it's only running, I would say, about 400 RPM, like 10% or something like that. So it is really, really quiet. And it ramps up when you're doing something very demanding. And as soon as the temperatures drop, the fan just goes down really quick as well. So it's really, really good. In terms of fan, I hate fan noise and I hate my desktop's fan noise. And when you look at the performance that I can get something very close to my uh, Core i7 8700K overclocked to five gigahertz and a noisy water-cooled desktop PC is just, it's kind of mind blowing that you got that kind of performance almost in something so small. Yeah, now I know there's a lot of comments from people saying, yeah, it's useless, there's, there's no GPU, I can't plug in my RTX 2080 Ti. Well, you can if you get one of these. Okay, so I posted a video on this. It is an external GPU stand, so you can plug in then your 1080 Ti. I did test out in that video 1080 Ti. You're gonna lose about 12% performance because it's PCI with only uh, the four lanes and not, you're not getting the PCI times 16 like you would with your desktop. But that's, that's the only real loss you're getting is about 12% max. If you could, if you wanted to, you could combine these two and make yourself a really high performance little tiny gaming PC. Now that's not my plan. I'm just gonna edit videos. That's it. So I only need the CPU power. So for my needs, this thing is really great. I really wish it had HDMI 2, Thunderbolt 3, would be a little bit tidier, I guess, for external GPUs, even though it would be a little slower. So this thing comes highly recommended from me, but I think go for the Core i7 model. So please do check my review of that one right up here. And thank you so much for watching this brief little video overview, well, this is brief for me, of the Core i9 version of that AliExpress mini PC.